was 31 years old. He was 24 years old when he first started in jiu-jitsu. He's done MMA, Muay Thai, bare knuckle boxing. He had been over 300 pounds, so he came in at 250 right here. He was a defensive tackle playing Division II ball in Louisiana. And now he's 33 years old. Pro boxing debut was at 31 because he's a full-time special education teacher. So he works in the Huntsville Independent School District, and he runs the behavioral support classroom at his school. And when you visit with him and you talk to him about it, he has such love and care for these children. Yeah, Tessie has a big heart, and he has a fight desire. <laughs> Quit talking, Perez has fought as a cruiser. Just ahead. Just ahead. He's 29 pounds lighter in this matchup than his opponent. He's a native of Puerto Rico, but lived most of his life in New Jersey. His family and friends there are now based out of Florida. Stop, stop, stop. Is trying to create some separation with that right hand. Yeah, look for the right hand of Hector, Hector Perez because he's fighting against a southpaw in Torres. The right hand is available against a southpaw. The fight for Perez is in the center of the ring. He's got the speed advantage, he's got the skill advantage. This is exactly where Juan Torres wants the fight. Perez has to get off those ropes and get back to the center of the ring. He fights with his back, and I mean Perez fights with his back against the ropes and he's just swinging wildly. It turns into a 50-50 affair. If he boxes, he's got the advantage. Just like that. Yeah, there was a right hand that landed as Torres dipped and went to his left a bit. Our heavyweights here coming to the end of round one, working our way towards the main event. Hector Perez was 9 of 36 in that first round on punches. Juan Torres was 6 of 39. We told you Torres' backstory, a late start to boxing, was a 300-pound defensive lineman in football, made some separation there with the left hand of the big southpaw. Then went to Muay Thai, MMA, bare knuckle boxing. Timmy, when we visited with him last night, he said, listen, it's tough for me on the boxing side. I have to give it so much time and attention because it's so much more technical and you really have to consider your footwork. He said boxing just takes so much more focus because you have to have your footwork right. Keep your hands up. Well, fighting Muay Thai and, and also fighting as an MMA fighter, you know, their stance is a lot different than a boxing stance. You know, the MMA fighters, they square up a lot more because they got to worry about leg kicks. A boxer is a little bit more narrow and a little bit more angle. So he said that was the hardest thing for him to adjust to, and he said he's been working on it. So we'll see if it's working today. Right now, he's just mauling right now. <laughs> Perez sweeping with a left and a right. And now back to the center of the ring. Dre, where you said obviously that's where he would have the advantage, and he shoots off that quicker jab. If he wants to have an easier night and take less punishment and build up more points and get his hand raised, and I think that's the objective. Yeah, Perez is a natural cruiserweight. He came up in weight to have this fight against Torres. Good jab right there from Perez. Stop. There's a slip right there. May have been the logo. As he awkwardly came forward with that left hand, was off balance. 
Could have been some moisture on that logo on the canvas. Essentially what Perez is doing is slowing down the pace of the fight. He's limiting the amount of times that Torres gets close and can land a big shot. He's piling up points. He's looking good doing it. His corner's happy. He seems to be more happy. So this seems like the right game plan to me. You see when the southpaw and the right-hander, you see their lead feet are on the same side. So you're going to see a lot of, a lot of, you know, stepping on each other's feet, trying to get control outside. And both fighters. You see, you see Perez get his left foot outside that time and landed a nice jab in the combination right here. Good combination that time from Perez. Was coming up in moments. Then it'll be our main event coming up. Joshua Greer Jr. against Michael Plania. That should be a good one. Right here, round number three of our heavyweights, Torres and Perez. Fine work from Perez at the end of round number two. He had a 10-3 connect advantage in that second round. Bernardo, what are you hearing out there? Well, Zbidi Fernandez told me, look, we just got to keep working, keep him busy, keep him thinking about the overhand right coming over his strong hand, and we got to faint first, not just let him come straight in. Fernandez is the trainer of Perez. Time of right hand. Hands free, guys. Hands free. Let him go. Stop! Here we go. Here we go. I got it. Nice. Go. I like the fact that Perez has landed a lot of jabs against the left handed Torres. Watch your head. Watch a your lot head. of times there's a misnomer out there that when a right hander is facing a left hander, that you can't land the jab. That's not the case. And Perez is showing us that here tonight. It's all about positioning, it's all about range, but that jab is actually closer, that face is closer to you as a righty facing a lefty than if you were facing a righty. It's all about timing. Pick him up, pick him up. Torres at this point is just trying to figure out what he needs to do to get to Perez. I mean, everything he's tried hasn't worked so far. Hands free, hands free. But when he gets inside where he wants to be, he needs to operate those hands. But how can you deliver a power shot when you're squared up like that? He needs to get that back leg behind him so that way he can have more leverage on his punches and create a little bit more space so he can let his hands go. Stop! Tim, I think Perez is making Torres work so hard to get inside that when he finally gets in there, he's got nothing left to get anything off. He really wants to rest inside instead of working. Well, he's there. He needs to get those hands working because that's exactly where he wanted to be. He worked so hard to get there, so let those hands go. Well, that's the 50-50 type of fighting I was talking about with Perez. His back against the road side. Swinging wildly with his chin in the air, Torres can sneak something through if Perez isn't careful. Just like he almost did right there. Keep him up. Stop! Ten seconds, here we go. Separation in this game with a left hand filling it. Dominoes. Well, the success has been not all that consistent with Mr. Torres, but at the Fight. end of that last round, Timmy, we saw him fill up a left hand that showed us something. Yeah, this is exactly what Dre is talking about. 50 50 exchange in the inside. You see Torres right there. You see Perez lifting up, trying to get some space, and he gets caught with a nice sweeping left hand from Torres. And it goes to the body here. Just haven't been enough of those spots for him. You know, Torres is trying to lean all this weight on Perez, trying to wear him down, and trying to, and trying to take as less damage as possible. 
as less leather as possible. That's the reason why he's in close right now. Yeah, yeah. That weighs about 29 yeah. pounds. A short yeah. left hand that time from Perez. And once again, Torres Dre just leaning on him here in the middle of round four. Stop! Here we go, here we go. A lot of times, Joe, fighters, they don't know any better. They, they, they like to rest on the ropes, and that habit is picked up in training. Your coach has to teach you how to rest at range. Rest while you're still working your jab, you're piling up points, but you're resting. It's a subtlety in the game, but it's really, really important. You don't want to do good work like Perez is doing and then go to the ropes and allow your opponent to get, take some ground back. Not a good place to rest if you're a young fighter against the ropes. And also, Dre, look at his back. Look at Perez back against the rope, all the young fighters out there. That is the wrong way. When you are getting near the ropes, you need to put that back leg behind you. Okay, use that as an anchor there, as a measuring stick to get yourself up off the ropes and give yourself an opportunity to go left or right. When you're squared up, there's nothing you can do. Can't go anywhere. Both these guys are tired. They're winded, they're tired. Perez has outlanded Torres 49 to 28. You know, guys, I don't mean no disrespect to any of these fighters in here. You know, it takes a brave soul to enter this ring, but this is the most sloppiest heavyweight fight I've ever witnessed, honestly. You know, these guys are sitting still, not doing too much, laying on each other, you know. I got to slightly disagree with you, Tim. It, it, it's sloppy in spots, but when Hector Perez is boxing from the outside, he's using that jab, and he's landing those right hands. I, I like it. It looks good to me. Dre, you, did you, you got your glasses? Put them on. <laughs> I don't have them on. Put on your glasses, Dre. But I think I'm seeing properly. <laughs> Please put them on. <laughs> Torres looking, he's stocking, looking for one shot. And that's the left hand, either to the body or to the head. Yeah, the conditioning of Hector Perez is starting to, to fail him a little bit. He's winded. That's why he's allowing Juan Torres to get inside and do what he's doing. And that's why we haven't seen much offense from Hector Perez. It's because he's tired. He's been tired from the first round, Dre. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. The first round. He's been tired from the first he's been tired from the first round. This has been happening from the first round on. Give him some credit, man. Come on. Good jab right there. Good jab right there from Perez. From Perez. This is what Trey was talking about. Okay, oh, 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 oh. stop. Time, time. Get the low blow stoppage here. As Torres will take his time to recover. Yeah. I know, I know. Let's try to keep him up, okay? We got deep. Man. Oh yeah, oh, that was low. Get the tape ready over there. Get the tape ready. Very low. Good. 
Let me stay back here. Come over here. Come over here. Get the tape. Get the tape. Tape that they're going to much needed rest and breather for, for both of these guys, Joe. Well, Torres, of course, is afforded the full five minutes for recovery there. Okay, go, go. Okay, back over here. Well, I just hope they come oh. out swinging. Come in, keep them up. Swinging here at the end of this, Timmy. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And do your thing, and that's Perez. The other that's side right. Right. saying, up, trust it. Got to have it. We're going to double up that jab and then send the left hand and hope that something comes. There is the left hand, slow and deliberate from Torres. Start of the sixth and final round. Perez seemingly in control. It's when he wants to be, Tess. You know, and the reason why I, I say this, Tess, you know, is because these guys have a great golden opportunity. They're on a huge platform on national TV. They probably would have never got this opportunity, and it's here. And they need to do something about it. Take advantage of your opportunities when they present themselves. Yeah, and there's no probably about it. This is what you get with boxing returning. This is only the third nationally televised fight card back. And just having gyms open, not many gyms have been open in recent weeks. To be able to fill out these fight cards is a great challenge. So unique opportunity for fighters like this to get TV airtime. Thus, Timmy, your comment at the sloppiest heavyweight fight you've seen, because as a world champion, you were always still back in the locker room getting ready. You weren't out with the rest of us watching the early fights that aren't on TV. We've seen some That's bad ones, true, Timmy. <laughs> That's not true, Tess. I had to come up the hard way just like these guys. So I've seen, I've seen the guys on the way up. Trust me. <laughs> Joe, I don't, I don't think it's that. I don't think Timmy was just in the back. I just think Timmy's the older fighter now, and he is very, very hard to please. Oh, is he ever? <laughs> Dre, go get those glasses, Dre. <laughs> That jab. Good shot from for Perez. Perez right there. That's been his best work throughout the night. It's when they're at range and he can fire off that jab. <laughs> Joe Perez has fought a decent fight, like we said in spots. Good jab right there as Torres came in, but just not doesn't have the conditioning to go to that next gear and close the show where he could have actually looked spectacular tonight. He looked good, but he could have been spectacular if he came in in a little bit better shape. Well, if you want spectacular, wait around for our main event. We have six-round junior middleweights coming up, and then the ten-round bantamweight main event between Greer and Plania. Mr. Don't Blink, Mr. Night Night, Joshua Greer, who brings a pillow to the ring. A contending bantamweight looking for a world title. Proud of his Chicago roots. Returned home to train for this fight, and he'll be coming up in our main event. Good job, good job. Good work, good work, guys. At the MGM Grand, after six rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Eric Cheek scores the bout 60-54. Patricia Morse Jarman and Ricardo Ocasio score the fight 59-55. For your winner by unanimous decision, from Tamarack, Florida, Hector Perez! Tough to see it any other way. Hector Perez.